Salter Harris fracture classification describes the patterns of fractures that occur through the growth plate of a long bone. It helps not only with classifying these fractures, but also predicts prognosis and can help with management of these fractures. Okay, so here's the long bone. There's the diaphysis, or the shaft in the middle, then the metaphysis, and finally the epiphysis at the end. Highlighted here in blue are the physes, also known as the growth plate. Now that we have a basic idea of the anatomy of our long bones, here are the different types of Salter-Harris fractures. They are classified from class 1 through class 5. To make things easier, there is a mnemonic to help you remember the different classifications. It's easy because the mnemonic is Salter. The thing to remember about using this mnemonic is that the distal portion of the bone is always facing downward or inferior to the growth plate, and the metaphysis is always superior to the growth plate. This is important because the mnemonic depends on this orientation. Okay, so going into this into more detail, a type 1 Salter-Harris fracture is a separation through the physis, or growth plate. Typically, it's a separation through the epiphysis and physial elements from the metaphysis. The way to remember this is the S portion of Salter, which stands for slipped. Prognosis for this type of fracture is excellent, and management is often non-operative. A type 2 Salter-Harris fracture is a fracture that goes through the growth plate into the metaphysis. I remember this type of type 2 fracture by the second letter in Salter, which is an A for above the physis. That's because the fracture extends above the growth plate and into the metaphysis. Prognosis for this type of fracture is excellent, and the fracture can at times be managed non-operatively. A type 3 Salter-Harris fracture is a fracture through the growth plate, which extends into the epiphysis. You'll remember this type of fracture by the third letter in Salter. This is an L, which stands for lower to the growth plate, because the fracture extends below the physis. This type of fracture has a prognosis that varies, and if there's significant involvement of the joint, this fracture can be unstable and operative management can be considered. Type 4 Salter-Harris fractures are those that go through the growth plate and through the metaphysis and epiphysis. In our mnemonic, we are now at the letter T, which stands for a fracture which goes all the way through the metaphysis the growth plate, and epiphysis. Prognosis is variable because this is mostly an unstable fracture and operative management should be considered. Lastly, we have a type 5 Salter-Harris fracture, which is a crush injury to the growth plate. You'll remember this type of fracture by the letters E and R in our mnemonic because you could think of this crush injury as an erasure of a growth plate. These fractures are often unstable and can lead to leg length discrepancies. And like our type 4 Salter-Harris fractures, operative management should be considered. <laughs>